And welcome along to the Perth Racing Preview. It is the Carlton Draft Newmarket on Saturday. A listed race over 1,200 metres featuring Marasco, who will be having his first start of this campaign for Fred Kersley. Hi, Marty Young with you, and I'll be about to be joined by Dion Luciani. But before I do, let's have a look at the weather, track and rail conditions for this Saturday. And, uh, well, good conditions return to racing on Saturday. A fine, sunny day. Expected maximum temperature of 21 degrees. The track has been rated dead at this stage by Jeff Murphy and the rail will turn to the inside position. I'm tipping horses up on the pace close to the rail will be suited this Saturday. Well, it's time to welcome along our form expert, Dion Luciani. Good to have you on, your, on the show, Dion. Good to be back, Marty. Hi, viewers. I hope we can find you all the winners out there for Saturday. Well, we need to find as many winners as we can. The bank manager is very keen for us to hit as better form as we can. Now, the first event of the day is the VB Mid Handicap over the 1,400 metres for the three-year-olds, and it brings together a pretty interesting feel. We'll be having a look at the past runs of Rocking the Blues and also catch up with uh, Paul King. Some of the other runners in the race now. Some of the other runners, Marty, include Kennedy, who was a much better run last start when third at the midweeks. Last, Curtin, who we'll take a look at the past run of also. And Berlin, whose speedy horse will probably find the front this week from the uh, Gary Nichol stables. Elixir, who's had two starts for two good runs now, but a little bit unlucky, Elixir. La Carouz, who's just trained off slightly at her last two outings after a good first up run. Sophie D, a little f distance away last start. Spy Story from the George Daly stables. Jason Whiting takes the ride. And also Wandu Miss from the uh, Heck McLaren stables with Shane Gilchrist on this week. Right, the horse we'll have a look at is Rockin' the Blues out there in the yellow with the black bands. Paul King is the rider, swoops down the outside. And then after the event, uh, Dion caught up with Paul King at the Belmont Midweeks. Dropped back to about seventh before the turn. Having gone past it was Ambulin and taken wide. Rocking the Blues is really starting to put in strongly down the outside. Inside the 250 and Rocking the Blues has raced up on the outside and shot to the front. The Future's battling on strongly. Bangadang Jack's getting home okay. Highfalutin struggling behind them. But it's all Rocking the Blues. It has bolted right away. The Future getting up on the inside last curtain. Ambulin battling home hard but Rocking the Blues racing away and rocking the blues won easily last curtain ran second it was a good win last start yeah no it was uh, Dion he's um he, he's been a horse that would you know we've needed to race a fair bit to sort of get him to do things right in his races and um he won his very first race up I lost it on protest and then he's uh we took it to northern for an easy kill and he only fell across the line that day um and it was a good win last start the sectional wasn't overly great um you know they only ran 36 and a bit um he seemed to handle the wet conditions really good. So, you know, we're just hoping that the horse can sort of continue on from here. And then this will probably be his last run there, go to the paddock. But by God, you have trouble drawing a barrier with him. He just can't draw a gate. Every time uh, Trish Roberts nominates a horse, he always draws wide. So, But in saying that, it's probably a good draw for him because he likes to sort of get back in his races. And um, at least when you draw him wide, you can sort of get going when you wanted to. And that's what happened last start. I sort of just peeled off about the 700 and wound him up. And by the time I got the corner, I was right on top of him and he, and he won running away. So, you know, it'd be nice to see him do the same today. Um, and if he can do that, then uh, he'll go to the paddock and have a nice break. Selections on race number one, and it's not an easy race, Dion. Uh, the pattern of the race, and it uh, doesn't seem to be a lot of pace. I know you've said Anne Boleyn will probably lead, and I agree with you there. Um, Rockin' the Blues, what did you make of that interview with Paul King? Off to the spelling paddock after the sad day? He did, Marty. He said it'll be its last run, but that didn't. he didn't give any indication that the horse was training off. I think just the fact that he's been in work for a while now, so mm -hmm. they're looking to... He's done a good job, so they're looking to reward him by tipping him out. All right, I'm uh, selecting one out of left field here, eight spy story. Really got home well last start. Before that, it had won a trial well. And I just think from barrier one, Jason Whiting and your speed, Matt, should have uh, this horse two or three back the fence. And if it can get the split at the right time, can provide a good change of luck for George Daly. On top to beat three, last curtain. Nice run, Neville Parnham's yard kicked off brilliantly on uh, Wednesday of the new season, a double. And five, Elixir will appreciate the 1,400 metres. For me, Marty, number five, Elixir on top. It's been two good runs by this filly. She had the blinkers added last start. She's just made her own trouble a little bit. She's always been flashing home mm. late. She handled the wet track last start, so I'm happy to put her on top for Steve Parnham, who I got a good report off during the week. 
to run second, number two, Kennedy, who was getting home late at his last outing. He handled the wet track as well. And to run third, the top weight rocking the blues, but it's going to take a very good ride from Paul King from the wide barrier, and I can see him getting caught wide rocking the blues. So numbers five, two, and one for me.